Incredible Hulk, we all know him, and what he is about, Hulk smash. Hulk angry, Hulk is the strongest there is. But, that's boring, isn't it? Such a boring character, one note, just a big dumb brute, is that so? What if I told you the green Goliath, in fact, is quite a deeper character, and that, no true justice has been done to him in his cinematic translation, which to be fair, have been just two standalone movies, retracing the same material, and a few appearances as a secondary character, not enough to explore the deeper aspects of the Hulk. So, sit back and enjoy, why I love the Incredible Hulk. Back in the 1950s, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby were delving into various comic genres, romance comics, cowboy comics, war comics, horror comics, and monster comics. Within these stories, there was a consistent theme of skepticism towards humanity, revealing its tendency to fear the unknown and its inclination to destroy anything different. According to Stan Lee, both Frankenstein's monster and Jekyll and Hyde, maybe even the man-wolf from the Universal movies, played a role in the creation of the Hulk. Like the man-wolf, the Hulk, initially, is a monster by night. Similar to Jekyll and Hyde, the Hulk exhibits a split personality, with Bruce Banner constantly battling the savage side of himself. And just like Frankenstein's monster, the Hulk is also a product of scientific experimentation, running away from humanity. The Hulk is a traveler, going around the world, mostly America. In this perspective the setting shines the best, the deserts, the mountains, the swamps, the new world, middle America where few leave, where UFOs are sighted, where monsters, might hide away, in the shadows from the curious eyes of humanity. Like Dr. Jackal and Mr. Hyde, Bruce Banner and Hulk are two beings caught into one body, is he a man or is he a monster or is he both? A great question from the cover of Incredible Hulk number one, and the answer is not as obvious. If you watched Ang Lee's Hulk, you may know the Hulk is the result of trauma of his abusive father. This trauma manifests itself through various distinct personalities within the Hulk. Firstly, there is the Savage Hulk, the usual Hulk, most of us know, who possesses a childlike intelligence, and the one who, the angrier he gets, the stronger he gets. Many Hulk stories, involving him, explore the theme that humans themselves are the true monsters. The Hulk merely desires to be left alone and avoids conflict whenever possible. He is not a proactive character, but rather a reactive one, trouble finds him, rather than the other way around. Although he does not actively seek acceptance, it is a need deep within him, and another repeating theme is that of Hulk finding acceptance, and after losing it. Next, we have Joe Fixit, a thuggish persona of the Hulk, probably the first we see, as he is usually a Grey Hulk. He is extremely self-involved and harboring resentment and distrust towards humanity, but unlike the Savage Hulk, who seeks solitude, Joe Fixit is just an egotist at heart with really loose morals, ending up as the bodyguard of a mobster and almost the theocrat in the microverse. Another fascinating personality within the Hulk's psyche is the Green Scar. While its origins may not be entirely clear, this persona stands apart from the traditional Hulk. Displaying higher intelligence, it is suspected that this personality emerged from the intense trauma of being rejected by Earth and being shot into space, ultimately finding a new home on the planet Sakaar. Lastly, we meet Bruce Banner, the primary persona of the Hulk. Remarkably intelligent, he ranks among the smartest individuals in the world. However, emotionally reclusive and harboring a disdain for the Hulk, Banner yearns to maintain a connection with humanity but struggles to effectively communicate his ideas to others. Additionally, it is worth considering that Banner may possess villainous tendencies. Despite his intelligence, he lacks moral clarity and fails to appreciate the human value within the Hulk. Moreover, he often disregards others and neglects to explain his plans or gain their respect. Speaking of others, Hulk Comics has a unique and diverse cast of supporting characters. In particular, three individuals stand out, Rick Jones, Betty Ross, and General Ross. General Ross is a general of the military, a very conservative person, a very conclusive person, someone who when faced with a problem, 
with the unknown, he sees two options, control it if you can, or destroy it if you cannot. This is his position on the Hulk. He enters in conflict with the Hulk, since the Hulk cannot be controlled, the Hulk is just a force of nature, so he must be destroyed. And with Banner as well, because Banner being a scientist he seeks to understand the unknown, to study it, unlike Ross who seeks to control it. But General Ross is no villain. He himself becomes a Hulk, at a later point. Then, we see through his perspective, now that he has been able to control the power of the Hulk for himself. And the thing is, he is a hero, he does stand by his values, and is ready to die for them. Betty Ross. She is the daughter of General Ross, and she did grow up more or less in his shadow, the general having a very powerful personality, but Betty is no different, having inherited this trait from him. She falls in love with Banner more out of curiosity, him being something extremely different from her father. But she is split between these two men she cares about, and being caught between the two's powerful personalities, she has a hard time reconciling with both men, do as I say, approaches. Rick Jones. He is both an every man and a lost soul, an orphan, a hippie, he doesn't have direction in life, he moved without purpose through life until he met Banner in the first story where everything starts. Him, being an every man, of course he is distrustful of the military, General Ross, and is trustful in Banner's authority as a scientist, and unlike most, he sees the humanity in Hulk. It's why in the 60s the Hulk was seen as a revolutionary figure, he was fighting against the man, the US military complex. The Hulk, is a somewhat revolutionary figure. He, like Frankenstein's monster, is born out of science, an abomination, a monster, rejected feared and scorned by humanity, the civilized world. He came from the unknown, a world of monsters, and that's why he is feared. In the world of the Hulk, the world is split in two, the world of humans, that hates and rejects the Hulk, and the unknown, the world of monsters, with which the Hulk interacts with. He goes between them, transitioning freely, he fights both man and monster, only seeking to be left alone and sometimes finds friends or acceptance, but he always loses them. From this world of monsters, the unknown, are also born his nemeses, who like the Hulk sit outside the human order, the regular world. Sometimes because they are rejected, like the Mole Man, sometimes by choice, like the leader. Specifically, in the case of the leader, we see the motivation of many usual supervillain in comics, taking over the world. But in his case, it is caused by having been, but a manual laborer, he also finds kinship in Modoc, who wasn't born with his super intelligence. The leader got his super intelligence after a freak accident where he was exposed to radioactivity. After gaining his intelligence, he saw the flaws of the human world, its weaknesses, and he rejected it, preferring solitude and other monsters like him. And even if incised to partake, to join these monster crusades against the human world, he always refuses, the Hulk even if rejected by the human world he does not seek revenge against it, he doesn't seek to destroy it. He seeks just a world, where to be accepted and he finds it, after he is shot into space by the Illuminati, he comes into the planet Scar, where he finds a world of monsters, the unknown, a world where chaos is the norm, not the exception. And out of this chaos he makes his own order, his own world, he becomes king of his kingdom. And it's all taken away from him, a freak accident kills most of his kingdom, and so he comes back to Earth for revenge, no. He hunts down the Illuminati but not for revenge, for justice, he doesn't savagely kill them, he shows restraint, he captures them, trails them and gives judgment, showing that even a brute, a monster like him, is capable of understanding justice. So, the Hulk makes a complete world reversal, he, the lowest of the low, the monster, has proven not only his humanity, but also the monstrosity of those of the civilized world, who judged him a monster. He is not monster, he is man, and they, the humans that once judged him so definitively, what are they, but monsters?